harvest coming through the earth of sickness. And it's coming to the children of the wicked one, sickness. But the Lord says it will make the earth tremble. But in your life, the curse has been reversed. I see some kind of, I think it's some kind of sickness some kind of plague but this is an international thing and we really need to pray against this we really need to pray against this right now it's a it's like a plague trying to develop in the world but it is a disease it's some kind of plague some kind of i'm searching for the word it's, it's not quite a plague it's not, it's, it's a something it's like a pestilence almost an epidemic maybe, yes. Coming is trying to develop. People are gonna take great advantage of this. This is not good. So we stop it where it is right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. To unleash the full power of the federal government in this effort today, I am officially declaring a national emergency. I saw an aircraft disaster, but I saw a missile blow one in half. Fox News alert now, a Ukrainian jet crashing in Iran minutes after takeoff yesterday, killing all 176 people on board. It was brought down by an Iranian missile, according to U.S. sources who were talking with NBC News. The Lord said to us, meet me in the temple at the 11th hour.
Hallelujah. I want to welcome everybody in to the 11th hour. We strummed a few chords, and that's what the Lord wrote to open this whole thing with today. Hallelujah. It is so good to have everybody with us today. It's going to be an exciting time in the 11th hour. There are prophetic things that are happening right and left, up and down, and sideways, and every other way. But I want to welcome you in, and I want to tell you something today. Jesus Christ is your healer. He's your deliverer. He's your financier, and he has absolutely not brought you this far to abandon you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. 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 I heard some, I heard this just then in the spirit, and I never heard a word like that as the, as the program came on, but I heard that uh, to let Doug know, God is with you, Doug, and he has not forsaken you. And whoever that is that knows Doug, you need to understand that the Lord is still there and will still bring them right out of wherever they are. Right Hallelujah. 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 Well, let's lift our hands a few more minutes and we want to give God some glory and praise. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God.
to lift our hands. Lift a hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah means praise the Lord 10,000 times. Come on and praise the Lord 10,000 times, would you? Just by simply saying hallelujah. And a voice in heaven cries.
differently. Yes, Lord. Come on, just a few more minutes, we'll play. Bring it up. Come on, bring it up.
You thought I had forgotten. You thought you couldn't have it. You thought the time had passed. But the Lord said, I will create the time again. I will bring the time back into the realm of possibility so that you can reach for it today with your faith. Just put out your faith and reach into this new time that I have created for you. For this time I have hidden for you. And this time now I have revealed for you. I will give you this pocket of time to receive your promise. Go ahead and reach for it, says the Lord. Your loved ones saved. Your finances straightened out. Your health restored. Everything about it. I'm going to give houses to some people. I'm going to give cars. No, I'm going to give fleets of cars to some people. For businesses are being born this very time. Reach into it, says the Lord. Reach into it and take it right now in the realm of possibility. Come on. Everything God's promise is in the realm of possibilities today. Everything God's promise is in the realm of possibilities today. Come on, somebody shout it. In the realm. possibilities did you hear that the Lord said I've created a new pocket of time so that you could reach into it with your faith today hallelujah I heard the Lord today is December the first and I heard him say today is the first of many the first of many Hallelujah. You fill in the blank. Yeah, say that. Don't you me. fill in the blank. Today's the first of many. You fill in the blank of what that many is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Well, it's good to be with you on the 11th hour today. I hope everybody's enjoying it today. Hope you enjoy the how God just spontaneously writes songs and writes music and does things like that. Well, tell us where you're watching from because we'd really like to know. 
I'll tell you, I was in praying over prayer requests yesterday, sitting at my desk. They come, they'll bring them to my desk, and some of them, and when I get them, it just, it just overwhelms you. And um, so we pray over your request. So where are we watching from today? Who's, who's with us today? South Carolina, Indiana, Texas, and Louisiana, Oklahoma. Oh, El Salvador. Oh, my goodness. Wow. It is such an honor to be with you today and to thank you for tuning in. You know, um, this is the 11th hour. It's a place where the prophetic flows so that you can make 11th hour decisions. 11th hour decisions are the last minute decisions, the last second decisions that, can, that you need to make to respond to the changing time. Hallelujah. Because, you know, the devil has to attack you in time. He can't attack you outside of time. He's, he's bound to what's common to a man, and time is common to a man. You know, that's why he asked Herod, uh, or when he, when he got Herod to ask uh, the wise men, he said, uh, what time did you see that star? He wanted to know the timeline because Satan don't understand prophetic time. He knows legal time because he's a legal devil. But you're not bound to operate in just legal time. You can operate above time, out of time, in the supernatural and God's time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody ought to shout. You know, you shout especially when you don't feel like it. That's when you shout, most of all. So if you're out there and you don't feel like shouting, man, now's the time to shout. Amen. Now, Father, I thank you for your word. And I ask you, Lord, to give us eyes to see and ears to hear that we can learn your word together as a family. In Jesus' name, amen. I have s s some things that I want to tell you today. The Lord had me up early. Uh, something I want to teach and then a prophetic uh, discourse or prophetic word we have to give today. <clears throat> and um, I want you to go over to Ezekiel 28 for just a few minutes. So I, I want to look at something there. A lot of people, you know, they, they don't uh, spend a lot of time in Ezekiel maybe, but those who study prophecy surely does. And, and um, <clears throat> watch this. In Ezekiel 28, the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Now I want you to notice that, that this is the prince of Tyrus. <clears throat> Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. Now think about it. Here's a prince, a man, who says he's a God. I sit, that's what he says, in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas. Yet thou art a man, and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. One translation says, you say you're wiser than Daniel. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures by thy great wisdom and by thy traffic. Hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart is lifted up because of thine riches? Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit, and thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas." Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am a God? But thou shalt be a man and no God. In the hand of him that slayeth thee, thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of, the stra of strangers. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord God. Now, in verses 1 through 10, this is talking to a man and talking about a man who has he has been convinced that he's, a, he's God. He's a God. 
Now, and he's sitting in the seat of God. Now, that's really important. I want you to listen to this. But when we get to verse 11, <clears throat> something changes here. The Lord starts talking to someone else who's not a man. He says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation, a funeral song, upon the king of Tyrus. So he was talking to the prince of Tyrus. Now he's talking to the king of Tyrus. And say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Well, wait a minute. This can't be a man. Because this being was in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, the carbuncle, and gold. And workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou wast created. So this is a created being. Then in verse 14, he tells us who it is. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. And watch verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub. This is a cherub. He's talking about Lucifer when he fell. From the midst of the stones of fire, thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee, and it shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. Now I want you to notice in verse 5, talking to the prince, the man, he says, by your great wisdom and by your traffic you've increased. Verse 18, talking to, the, to Satan himself, he said, you've defiled your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your traffic. See, one of the most horrible things you hear the world talk about right now is trafficking. Trafficking simply means merchandising, trading, selling. And I want you to understand something. There is such a thing as horrible as what we see this, this word used as today. There is also such a thing known as spiritual trafficking spiritual trafficking now here we have a man now this is going to sound strange to some of you but listen to what i'm telling you from verses 1 through 10 is talking to a man verses 11 through 18 and down through here is talking to satan himself and both of them are traffickers you notice that so they met on the trading floor in the spirit and this man sold his soul to Satan. He trafficked his soul. Satan traded him for his soul. And so there's such a thing as, as trading uh, for, for your soul. I want to talk to you about something called spiritual trafficking. Now, now we find out that this man was so possessed with the devil that he thinks he's a god, not a man. He believes he's wiser than Daniel, but he's just a man. This is a man controlled by Satan. Then when he starts talking about the devil being a trafficker, notice he traded his soul for power, false wisdom, and it would soon be required of him. Satan is a, tra is a trafficker. The Bible said this was one of his major downfalls. Trading his anointing, he's the only cherub we ever have record of that was anointed. And he traded this anointing for allegiance and worship 
And this anointing that was on him, it didn't take him long to figure out he was different than the other cherubs, the other angels. He knew this. So then when he fell, he, he brought that into the earth and he began to traffic for the souls of men. He wanted the souls of men. And so he would trade them. And he'll pull his wagon right up to wherever a man is. And like a peddler or like someone who has a wagon of wares to sell. And he'll bring those up there. And he'll begin to barter and trade. And keep bringing things out of his stuff, out of his storage. Until he can find something that will catch the man's eye. Find something that will have a gleam in his eye. That he will sell his soul over to him. And Satan would have trafficked a soul. Now, we find out, we go over here, let's, um, let's look at something all oh, in Luke. Yeah, let's look at Luke 12, and let's put this up on the screen. Luke 12 and verse 15, and if you'll stay with me a few minutes, we're, we're learning something here. How many of you are, are getting something out of this now? The trafficking of the soul. This is a very serious thing. The trafficking of the human soul. Now, notice in, in verse 15. Well, we'll start in 13. And one of the company said unto him, talking to Jesus, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not of the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? He says, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and not rich toward God. So this man, it didn't say God required his soul. It said his soul was required. This man had, had his soul trafficked. He was thinking now only of heaping up to himself. Nothing else, thought, taking thought for no one around him, not even sharing the goods out of a stacked barn, just tear the barns down, spend the money to build bigger barns and fill it up so that he could feed his soul with it. His soul had been trafficked. Satan had traded him something for his soul. Hallelujah. Now, I want you to see this. Now, when we start talking about trafficking the soul, we have to start looking at something. Uh, well, let's just look at it. Matthew, go over to Matthew 26. Matthew 26, you know. We spent, we're going to spend time in the Word today, flipping through the Word for a little while. Hallelujah. Now, now watch this. In Matthew uh, 26, verse 14, Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priest, and said unto them, What will you give me, and I will deliver him unto you? Watch this next line. And they covenanted with him for thirty pieces of silver. And from that time, he sought opportunity to betray him. You see that? He sought opportunity to betray him. Now, <clears throat> Judas, Judas 
Well, let me read this before I continue. Verse 26, And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, unto, uh, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood. And so forth. He comes on down here. Watch what he says now. He says, um, he starts talking about, you find that, that Judas has betrayed him. Verse 20, he says, when the even was come, he sat down with the twelve, and as they did eat, he said, verily I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Verse 23, and he said, he that dippeth his hand with me in the dish, the same shall betray me. And you'll find out as you start to study this that the Bible says when Judas was handed the sop, when, when Peter said, John, find out who it is. And John laid his head on his breast and could hear the heartbeat of God. And he said, uh, who is it, Lord? He said, he that dips the bread with me and takes the sop, whoever I hand it to, is him. And he handed it to Judas. And the Bible said as soon as Judas took it, Satan put it in his heart. He covenanted. He trafficked his soul. And did you know the Bible calls Judas the son of perdition? Perdition means a lost, by, in, in all other words, it, it would mean a lost, damned soul. Judas, as one preacher said years ago, he kissed the door to heaven and went to hell. And he's called the son of perdition. Well, it's the same spirit later and you see in the scripture that the son of perdition is talking about the Antichrist that will come. So we know it's the same spirit involved here. So the trafficking of the soul, see what Judas was, Judas was, uh, Jesus had 10 authentic Jewish disciples that were Jews. Two of them were not one of them was a man called Simon Zelotes. He was a, he was a black man from a descendant from Cushi, from Africa. And the other was Judas Ishkerot. We say Iscariot, but it's Ishkerot. And so Judas, uh, the reason his name is Ishkerot is Ishmael. He came from the Moabite side of the Jordan. He, he wasn't an authentic Jew. This is why he was buried in a field for strangers. And so Judas covenanted with religion and trafficked his soul for 30 pieces of silver. And so when Judas sold his soul, see, Judas loved money. He loved it. And he put his love into something that has no love to give back. Money doesn't love you. Money doesn't love anyone. Money... Money don't have a soul. Money buys and sells souls. When you get over into Revelation 18 and you start reading about the, the, the uh, Babylon the Great has fallen, it starts talking about the things that are traded there, are trafficked. It comes right down to the end and says, and the souls of men. The soul of a man is on the block daily to be trafficked. And Satan is out there to traffic that. He wants to trade you something for that. He wants to trade some people something for that. And you can see people has traded their soul and their souls have been trafficked all over the world right now. You can see it especially in this country right now. You see it in a lot of entertainers. You, see, you can tell a lot of them have trafficked their soul and they've sold it. And I'm not talking about their spirit right now. I'm talking about their soul. Satan longs to take control of a soul because the soul is the mediator between the spirit and the body. Nothing, everything that comes up from the spirit has to pass through the soul before the body can react to it. And Satan wants to sit in the seat of the soul. If he can ever sit in the seat of your soul, then he can access any power, whether it's good or bad, within your spirit. He can access a human power. Ability. Human abilities are absolutely amazing. You know, I remember when I was uh, a little boy, there was a, there was a car turned over, and a little 10-year-old boy fell out of it. And I was just a boy. And when it fell over in the media between the highways, the car rolled over on the boy. 
Well, the grandmother was in her 60s, and she just lost it. She panicked and because she couldn't get him out from under the car. And all at once, something just clicked like that. And that woman picked that big, heavy car up off that boy and got him out from under it. Just a little woman. Now, what was that? You see sometimes when demon-possessed people will get hold of people. And they pick up, well, one guy, you know, picked up a giant, huge safe, seven, 800 pounds, and threw it through a wall. And it was so heavy, it split his chest cavity open. But how could he lift such a thing? Remember the madman of Gadara, was, he would break chains and fetters as if they were nothing. Well, that's not the strength of demons. That's the strength and power that lies within a human. And the only thing that gets in the way of that is the conscious mind. And you ever notice that people will say things like this? If they, if they'll say, well, they're not right. You know, in the South we say, well, they're just not right. And anybody that's just not exactly right in their mind, they, you know, there's... They'll say, you've never noticed how strong they are? It's because their conscious mind don't get in the way of that. And so they, don't, they never see the realm of impossibility. And so Satan knows it. And if he can get control of your mind, he can shut that mind off. And he'll drive a human body until he destroys it. But he'll get all the use out of it he can. And if you want to know the truth, and I don't know why I'm going down this road right here, but that's why, uh, that's why methamphetamine was invented. That was, that was Hitler's drug. He ran his whole army with it because they could stay up for weeks and they would shut their minds off and that spirit could just take control of that and run them and run them and run them. See, Satan is trafficking for the soul. Everyone you see that Satan has tried to get you hooked on addiction and get you addicted to things like that, he's trying to traffic your soul. He wants the soul of the man. Well, there's a lot of ways that he traffics for the soul. But most of that is to offer you something that will make your eyes glitter. Something that will feed your flesh. Something that will make you happy. And make you where you're, you feel like you have a purpose. Suddenly he'll, he can offer you something. See, trading, before there was really money could be carried, trading was done. Now I'm going to show you something. When, in the days of ancient Israel, barters and trade or traffic was done more. And so if they met someone from another nation, they would trade for things they wanted that was valuable. Like uh, to the Jews, mint, mint was very valuable. Mint leaves. Well, this person from, say, Syria or somewhere, wherever it may be, who had some mint leaves meets a man from Israel who has a grinding stone. They want to trade and so he says, I'll trade you this for this much mint. He says, all right. And they would make the trade. The difference between Israel and everyone else was as soon as they would get the mint leaves in their hand, they would take a pair of sheep shears and cut off part of that mint leaf and tie that into a box. And every nation recognized them as servants of Yahweh because they tithed. And so this is what, this, if you tithe, your soul is protected. You see what I'm talking about? Because if you'll tithe to God, you have God on your mind and not you. People that God, if God can't get people to tithe or give, Satan is bartering with them for their soul. He wants to control that soul. Now, let me get back on, on the point. I, um, I just sense I need to tell you all that. So when you have the trafficking of the soul, you see that with a lot of entertainers. But you see that a lot with politicians. And when you see this, you know, have you ever noticed that somebody can leave home and, and run for political office and say, 
oh, we're just so, you know, <laughs> oh, I'm going to help. I'm gonna, I've got this in my mind. And they lay out these wonderful plans until they get to Washington. And then suddenly they change. Just change. Because they end up trafficked. Their soul becomes trafficked. And all at once, child sacrifice and abortion means nothing as long as they can get what they need. And they'll sell out all of that. Their soul becomes trafficked. And what you're looking at right now is a whole political party. And this is where I wanted to get to today. A whole political party. The Democrat Party, the soul of the party, has been trafficked. And Satan has control of the soul. How else do you think someone could laugh, order a salad, while they look up and look across the table and talk about selling baby parts to purchase their new car? And then say, Just excuse me a minute. And be polite while they order and then go back to talking about how much an arm is worth. This is someone whose soul has been trafficked. And it's got to the point to where it doesn't matter if 345,600 babies are murdered every year or offered to bail every year. It makes no difference as long as that politician gets the power and the money of what they want. Now you think I'm kidding you. How does a politician go into government broke and come out millionaires? There's not enough money there to pay them that kind of money. Their soul has become trafficked. And so we have to understand what we're dealing with right now. And what you're about to see is the rewards for a trafficked soul. We've never seen things like that on that scale. But we're about to see the rewards for trafficked souls. I hope somebody's getting this. I, I, you know, sometimes you're just, you're just talking around, 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 trying to get something said here. I want you to listen to this prophecy that um, the Lord told me this morning. Let me go ahead and say this to you. Uh, early this morning before daylight, when the Lord starts talking to you, you just, you, there's no mistake in it. I just had to get up. I just finally had, just had to get up and try to ride it. I saw two Bidens. I saw two of them. That's the only way I know to tell you. One was in turmoil and chaos. And one was pale. Almost as if someone, I saw it in turmoil and chaos as if someone is underwater, rolling uh, around under the water like a chariot and horses tumbling is the way I saw it. This is one Biden I saw coming, and the second was a pale Biden. I heard this, the soul of the Democrat Party has been trafficked. Child sacrifice, Cuomo taking credit instead of God, plagues hitting, New York especially the city, the homosexual community being lifted up above God's marriage plan. Now Satan has entered the trade floor to traffic the soul of a nation. You have extreme players on the floor right now that are totally sold out. Jezebel, Herod, Saul. You have a twisted A team. This is what I heard the Lord say. I'm going to hold this generation responsible for what's next. 
Who? The people? Yes. The people over large denominational organizations. You were the watchman for this generation. And you only saw what your eyes wanted to see. And then you turned your head to what was really coming. Did you think I would violate my word, says the Lord? Did you really think I would? I still believe in my word, whether you do or not. I will hold you responsible for what happens next. For every child thrown into the fire of Moloch. For every one, you are a stumbling block on which my people will trip going into the Red Sea. I am dissatisfied with the leadership of the Southern Baptist, the Presbyterians. For the prophecies of Smith Wigglesworth will unfold before your eyes. It is now the time of war and peace. I am for peace, says the Lord. But when I say I am for peace, they say I am for war. Then I saw a critic of the prophets, someone who is critical of the prophets and constantly mocks them. They drive a blue car and I think a gold looking one. You are in trouble, the Lord said, but you bought it. Then I heard this. Witches, witches that have come against the prophets, your end awaits. It is upon us. Forward, I say, but you have taken off your boots. Forward, I say, but you, religion, have taken off your boots. Listen to this. I will do it for my name's sake. But there is a sad time coming. And it was religion that has sown for it. You will make it across the sea. But the wilderness awaits. This is where religion eventually dies off. And then a new generation of Christians will emerge. I heard... TBN, Trinity Broadcasting Network. You were told to run with the vision. But running without my word is devastating. And as quickly as something arises, it can fall. Take heed, for the time is at hand. Now the thread has been pulled, and the unraveling has begun. Key figures will now come unraveled in their minds, and you will see it. For now, just like the prophecy of Elijah that he didn't see come to pass concerning Jezebel, oh, but it did come to pass. You will now see come to pass the prophecies of my Elijah who left the earth come to pass now. Behold, it has begun, says the Lord. Then the Lord kept talking to me. It's really different without music up here. Then the Lord kept talking to me and he said these things. So I wrote this down. This is what I see coming on the other side of the Red Sea. There is a major event concerning Syria. For now there is another league of nations forming on the other side. Watch Syria. That's what I heard. Watch Syria. I heard an extreme warning to the U.S., I saw, I'm not sure if it's concerning, now I saw this, I'm not sure if it's concerning two or three leaders in Israel. I think they will be replaced. And then I heard this, 
Do not set your sights to replace Netanyahu. For he is not yours to replace. Lest you sow a seed of discord among your nation. Deal swiftly, I heard, but mercifully with Iraq. For the generation in the church that now is will cross the Red Sea. Listen to this. Because it is between me and my prophets. He said the generation that now is will cross this Red Sea because it's between God. And I heard it this way, between God and Moses. In other words, it's between him and his prophets right now. So they will cross. But the generation that now leads you will never be strong enough to cross into the promised land. Therefore, I will raise up one who is not afraid of giants. Hear the word concerning giants. Big tech. You have raised this generation and taught them your secrets. And they have learned them well. Now even a babe can work technology. You sharpen their swords. You have raised your own downfall. And then I heard this. This was talking to the giants, the big tech. They raised their own downfall. I heard this. Mark, you will see. That was what I heard. Then I heard the name Jerry. I'm not sure who or what that is. But I hear concerning banking now. And this is what I heard. Loomis. Concerning banking, I heard Loomis. Did you think that your corruption would go unnoticed? Did you? Loomis. And then I heard something about the fall. That's a ways from now. Fall is coming. After I heard Loomis, then I heard fall, and I don't know if it means a fall there or a fall that's coming or both. But I heard fall is coming like a big cedar tree crashing. Remember, the Lord said. So these are things that I heard early this morning. And God is about to do something here. He's about to do something worldwide. And the Red Sea will be crossed. But it's between God and His prophets. But after the Red Sea, the generation that chooses to go into the promises will have to do that. They'll have to choose. They'll just have to choose. God's best is waiting on you. You rest your mind on something. We will cross. Because God has, it's between him and his prophets now. But when we get on the other side, and you sing your song of praise, and you take the timbrel and begin to praise, don't do like in the scripture where it was the last praise service they ever had in the, in the wilderness. Keep praising all the way to the Jordan. And God is going to now give you the best 10 years you have ever seen. It will be the strongest time I believe we've ever seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, that's what the Lord said to bring today. And so this is exactly right. Good is the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. We esteem the word of the Lord. You know, the Lord is out to deliver everyone that will let him do such a thing. So today, take great courage. God created a pocket of time. Remember, a while ago, 
He told us in a prophecy, I created a new pocket of time for you to reach in and get your possibilities. That everything I promised you is possible right now. So why don't you go ahead and reach in and do that? Why don't you go ahead and say, I'm going to tell you something. I'll, I'll not only cross the Red Sea, but I'm going to go into the promised land. I'm going to absolutely possess the promises of God. God is not trying to keep people out. The scripture said they provoked him at the sea. And so what we have to do is we have to be ready, have our shoes on, everything ready to cross. Hallelujah. Your best time is yet to come. Start saying that right now. My best time is yet to come. It begins today. Oh, come on now. I heard one per I know we ain't got a big, we ain't got a crowd here, but I heard I heard Roxanne say it. So we said again, my best time is yet to come. It begins today. You know what? I still hear that prophetic word the Lord gave me. He said, it has begun, so enjoy the run. Hallelujah. Enjoy the run. People think, well, I wonder what that run could mean. Well, I don't know, but Elijah outran the king's chariot. Absolutely outran it. No matter what happened in government, Elijah was ahead of it, moving. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's what the prophetic is, is always in the future, moving. Hallelujah. Well, it's been good to be with you today. I hope you enjoyed the 11th hour. Did uh, we get any hallelujahs? Anybody with me uh, around the, the world, around the nation? <clears throat> Kuwait tuned in today. Hallelujah. You know, you know, while everybody's watching, okay, you said Kuwait. That's the first, isn't it, for us? So Kuwait, England, Sweden, Germany, all these nations, what I would like for you to do is on behalf of your nation, stretch your hands toward the camera, toward the screen you're watching. And I'll, we're going to pray for your nation. We're going to pray that massive revival starts breaking out there. And when, it, when we pray this, we're going to believe God with you. And when we do, now if things start shaking up in your government, don't get put out. Because a lot of things just has to change for revival to happen. But I want to pray. I was led to pray for these nations and their revivals. So just stretch your hands this way. Now, Father, I lift these nations up to you right now. Lord God, these are our family, but they're your people. And Lord God, I pray for my family. I pray for their nations, Lord. You're no respecter of person. And Lord, the oil and the wine, the born-again ones are there. The spirit-filled ones are there. Lord God, I ask you right now on their behalf, let there be a massive revival kindled today. That it start today, Lord. That they see souls saved and, and a wave of the Holy Ghost start moving across these different nations. And I give you praise and honor and glory for it. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. I saw a, uh, a, I've been seeing a lot lately about shakings and quakings and earthquakes have been happening, you know. And I saw something about a, then while I was praying about something about a volcano. And, and this is, we need to just watch for that because God will give us signs in the earth. And so we need to watch for that. I still believe that there is a great, um, one prophet said a great energy source is coming. It's still coming. I heard that then. It's still coming. That energy source is still coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, Father, I thank you today for your word. I thank you for the anointing. And, Lord God, I thank you for the people that are watching and the nations that have tuned in with us, Lord. I ask you right now, Lord, for the great blessing to be upon the families that have viewed today. Yes, Lord. Wasn't it amazing we said something about a revival in Iran and then Kuwait's watching and 
It's starting over there. Hallelujah. In that part of the world, I mean. Lord, I ask you to grant them great miracles this very week. Miracles they have never seen before. And they'll know your hand is on this whole thing. I give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I pray for Myra, whoever Myra is. I pray that Myra have a peace come into her life right now. There's a Myra. I saw the, uh, the name Myra. And I pray that this peace come into Myra's life and bring a great settling into her life. In Jesus' name. Myra, the Lord loves you and he is with you. He is not going to abandon you nor forsake you. So, Lord, we lift up Myra to you now. That she absolutely walk in a peace she hasn't known for 10 years. And I give you praise and honor for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we come to the part of the 11th hour where if you would like to give, the altar has been prepared for you to sow your seed. And, and um, we have been obedient today to what the Lord said to do in the music and the words. So if you'd like to give today and you're watching me on the Robin D. Bullock website, you can just go to the give button and follow that. If you're watching uh, on just YouTube, you can go to the description, and there is a link that you can go and give, but I want to pray over you before you do. We don't want to just, as I used to say, bucket plunk. We want to pray. We really want to pray. So, Lord, I pray right now over the giving of the people, Luke 6 and 38, that as they give, it's given unto them. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto their bosom. For with the same measure that they meet with all, I pray it be measured to them again. Lord, I believe it, I receive it, and I call it done in Jesus' name. Now, for those of you that are tithers, and you're tithed to this ministry, I want to pray the blessing of Malachi chapter 3. We'll start in verse 10. I want to speak that over you right now. That as you bring all your tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in the house of the Lord. We prove you now, Lord, if you'll not open them the windows of heaven. Pour them out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And rebuke the devourer for their sake, that he not destroy the fruits of their ground. Neither shall their vine cast her fruit before its time in the field. And Lord God, I pray that all nations, all nationalities, all ethnic groups, Lord, all ethnic ethnicities, no matter what nation they're in, Lord, that no kind of racism or anything like that can work against them. Lord, that them and their families are blessed, blessed, blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, there's exciting things yet to come. And so remember that, and uh, until next time, we get right here together around God's Word. I want you to remember this. Never forget this. That we love you, Jesus loves you, and God is absolutely good. Shalom, shalom. <laughs>